You ever have one of those days where nothing goes right? That's today. <laughs> Hey, this is Brian. Thanks for watching Keys Motorsports. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe and check us out at keysmotorsports.com. You ever have one of those days where just nothing goes quite right? Well, that's our today. As a matter of fact, we actually just tried to film this video about how nothing's going right and we didn't have audio. <laughs> so we had to do it again. Um, let's talk about this for a second. So behind me, this is a video that will most likely come out way after this video is released. We had a customer spin a crank hub. Pistons and the valves, they collided and ended in catastrophic motor failure in the process of doing a Carbon Stage 2 motor, which I'll be putting in with our tech tonight. So be sure to stay tuned. That's actually not part of our bad day. Everything on here is actually going great. So that's a good, that's a good sign right there. All right, over here, you can see that we have Edwin's M340i G20 on the dyno. And if you've been following, you will know that we did a pure 800 turbo. What you may not have known is, I know a lot of you guys are asking, you know, what are the numbers, what are the numbers? Well, we broke our, one of our dyno pods, um, I guess about a month ago now. Um, now, Dynapack was awesome about it. They actually sent us out new replacement pods before we even sent the other ones back. So they didn't leave us stranded. The only problem is the model that they sent us is slightly newer than the one that we had and we're running into a little compatibility issue. So. Right now it's like 1.30 in the afternoon. We've been here since eight, trying to do the dyno runs and it's just not working. Um, we try to do as much diagnostics on our own. Basically the RPM is off by double. So if the car is at 2000 RPMs, the computer thinks it's at 4000 RPMs, which is kind of a problem. So we weren't able to do any runs at all. We weren't even able to prep it to get into fourth or fifth gear to actually do a run. So. That's been a mess, uh, but Dynapack's being awesome about it. They have Dynapack New Zealand, who's actually going to be remoting into the computer any minute now. So in this video, you may see a dyno run. You may not, I can't make any promises because today is not really going on as we planned it would. Um, the other thing that we were going to do, as you can see, Edwin did not have a good day the other day because he has this broken lip. And we're in the process of replacing it. So we're gonna bring a little joy to his day there. And then we also have to do a little diffuser work. So. We figured nothing was really going right today. Um, this was gonna be a separate video, the diffuser was gonna be a separate video, and then the dyno was gonna be a video, and nothing's working. So we're just gonna, just gonna wing it. Um, what you almost saw when we filmed it the first time without audio, uh, I started to remove the front lip, and basically I just took out all of the screws, which are in a little pile over here on our, on our dyno. Um, now what I'm about to do, I just grabbed our heat gun, I'm going to start to heat it up and I'm going to press the lip off the bumper. Um, by heating it, you're going to give your 3M tape a little flex and it's gonna come off a thousand times easier. It's about 50 degrees or so in here right now, so a little chilly, but I think this should be pretty easy. So with that, let's take this lip off. Look at that. I got all the tape off in one shot. Heck yeah. <clears throat> that went well. First thing today. First thing today. I'm gonna go grab some rubbing alcohol and we're gonna clean off the bumper and we're going to prep it for the new one. All right, we're gonna clean this off with some 70% isopropyl alcohol. All right, now because of how the old lip was installed, um, sometimes what happens when you take an old lip off, you'll get these little um, indents that stick out. So what you can do is if you take a sharp blade, you can just go, just go over them and just cut them flat, just like that. Um, it's gonna make whatever lip you put on stick a lot better because it's not gonna stick, it's not gonna pop it out at all. Now the lip that we're going to be installing on Edwin's car is our three piece version. So um, it has your, your two end pieces and then also the piece that bridges across the middle. So what we're gonna do with this, I'm gonna start by just peeling all of the tape and then we're going to stick it on. Now, before I do that, to show you what it's going to look like. It looks pretty dang sweet. And it's gonna cover up all of those old spots um, that we saw from before. So everything's nice and lined up at the back. So with that, I'm gonna peel the tape. OK, 
Okay, so I am gonna go back and put screws into this, but we're just gonna do that for now. All right, so let me grab the other side. Totally just cut my hand. Not working out today. <laughs> All right, so then I'm gonna do peel off the tape on this one. So now we're ready to mount the bottom piece with the nut and bolt. So it needs to go through this bottom section here. And then you're probably not gonna be able to see this, but there's a hole right there. Probably see a little different color. I'm gonna feed this up through here. And we're gonna nut and bolt this on both sides. I'm just hand threading this in for now. And then I'm gonna go back and put the nut on. But this way you can see what it's going to look like once we screw that up. Hopefully we don't screw it up. <laughs> Can't believe I said once I screw it up. That's just, that's the day we're having. Whew. I thought that was gonna hit me in the eye. So I should always wear eye protection when using a wrench. <laughs> all right, so then once you've done all of that, um, I've already done a couple over here. You can't really see them anyway but just take the supplied screws and this is going to go back into the bumper like so. Don't go too tight. You wanna make sure that it's snug, but you don't wanna go too tight because you can crack the carbon if you do. All right, nice and solid. And I think this looks great. I think it adds a lot more aggressibility than the last one. I, I love how this piece, so first off, the way that we had this made, it's three piece. So it, it makes it um, easier to ship and also it makes it easier to install. So with the one piece, a lot of times you have to have two people with this. You do the one spot, you do the second spot, you know, do a test fit um, of the middle piece and then you put the middle piece on and you're golden. I love how this overhangs to this other piece. I think it just looks so good. So anyway, that is fully installed. So, hey, our day is really coming around. I think this looks great. And I'm looking forward to securing the diffuser. So let's head back to the back bumper and I'll show you what we're gonna do over there. So now what we're going to do is we are going to secure Edwin's diffuser here. This is actually um, one of our test pieces that we originally used to develop the product. Um, so what we're going to do, as you'll notice, if you look at these stock plastic tabs, they are much more aggressive than any carbon tabs, just because with carbon, you can only go so thick. So you have one of two options. Now with our diffusers, we include, we start including these little hardware kits where it includes the drill bit and also these little plugs. And what you can do if you have space is you fully insert it into the bumper. A lot of times it works best if you take the bumper off, then you mark it, you drill a hole, and then you can take one of these little pins or you can use a zip tie if you want to, and then you just push it in the back and then it stays in nice and snug. The alternative method, because that involves removing the bumper, I know a lot of you aren't going to want to do that. Um, I'm going to show you an alternative method. So if you take a roll of 3M tape, what you can do is start to cut these little strips, like so. And you can use it on the tab to build it up. So that way, when it goes in, it's going to be a much better grab. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to cut a bunch of these little pieces and then we're going to pop it in. All right, so now what we're going to do, we're going to leave most of the red on um, just for ease of installation. It's not going to go anywhere, but we are going to take a couple pieces of red off. So we'll just kind of space them out just to give it a little tack. So not only is it not gonna go anywhere, but it's gonna be quiet too. It's not gonna, there's not gonna be any vibrations or anything weird. Okay. Hardest part of the job is peeling the tape. I'm gonna line it up. Make sure everything underneath is where it needs to go.
Okay, you hear how it just snaps in? Just go through and make sure it's all popped in. Look how nice and tight that is. Then you can go and you can put the couple screws in the bottom here. So today is definitely shaping up. The lip looks unbelievable. The diffuser isn't going anywhere. It looks great. My phone was like three years old and it would die by one o'clock. So I got my new phone today. They just delivered the case to the wrong address about two, no, actually about four miles that way. And uh, we got a call from a random guy saying, hey, I have a package for Keys Motorsports. And it was my carbon fiber case here and a, a Dodson DCT pan, which is like $1,000. So glad he returned that. But yeah, so now we have a, a working phone. We have a working front lip. Um, I bought this case. Actually, we're gonna talk about this phone case another day. Boom, look at that, that looks pretty cool. It's not very protective at all, but that's what Apple cares for, right? But um, yeah, so now I'm not gonna destroy my new phone. And look at the dyno. They left us a note and it says, settings changed. Please try the dyno again. Thanks, dyno pack support. They are awesome. So what we're gonna do now, we're gonna turn the fans back on, we're gonna jump in the car and we are gonna see if we can dyno Edwin's G20 M340i. Yeah, baby. All right, gearbox is good. Let's set this up. Sweep test. 2,000, whoop, not 20,000, 6,000. Oh, it's safe. We're redlining. <laughs> wah, 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 boom. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Sorry, Evan. <laughs> uh, folders. Pure 800, act folder. Yeah, baby, we are golden. So be sure to tune in next time to see this car being done. Once again, my name is Brian. Hope you enjoyed today's video. If you're interested in any carbon or boot mode or anything for your BMW, be sure to see the links down in the description. If you like our videos, give us a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe. And we'll see you in the next video. All right, so right now we've done two runs with Edwin's G20 M340i on the fixed dyno. And let me just say, you do not want to miss this video because that's a lot better than I thought it was going to be.